Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with a quick video. Let's see if that's really possible. <laughs> to show you how to use some Wonder Under to do a fused applique quilt block. I'm doing this because the next quilt that I have coming out, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing wonky stars, but not the kind of wonky stars that you may have seen. It's just going to be applique. It's going to be a wonky five point star. Very easy to do, but I'm not 100% sure that's what I want in that next quilt. So I'm not making it part of that series. I'm just going to do this video now. It's useful, even if you never want to make the quilt that is coming up in a little while. So here we go. The first thing you want to do is whatever size quilt blocks you're using in your quilt, you want to cut them a little bit bigger so they can be trimmed down after you do the um, the applique, just in case it shrinks it a little bit, like if you do some zigzag stitching or whatever. My block needs to be four and a half inches cut, so I cut this to five inches about. So that gives me some wiggle room and then I can easily trim it to four and a half. Now four and a half is the size before it's put into the quilt. With the seam allowance, it's going to be even a little bit smaller. So I want to make sure that whatever I stick in the center here isn't going to get caught in that seam allowance. So if the finished block in the quilt is like four, what you can do is take a piece of paper and cut it a little bit smaller than that, like maybe a three inch square and draw whatever it is that you're going to use for the applique or print out something and just make sure it's going to fit. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? So I wanted a star. So I have this star that I just drew and see it's wonky. You know, the points are not all the same and that's what I wanted. And that's going to go somewhere in the center of my quilt block, which is going to be this piece of muslin. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, cut a piece of scrap wonder under which I had in stock and it sold out completely in no time so I'm going to just cut a piece out for the ease of showing you this and I'm going to draw it on the soft side the smooth side smooth is no glue the rough side is glue so I'm just going to take a pencil here and just go around my star do about as good of a job as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can straighten it out with the scissors when I'm cutting. I'm just getting an idea of the shape. You can do any shapes you want. All right, now I'm going to cut this star out. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying to pretend that I care about which scissors I use on paper <laughs> and which ones I use for fabric. And I can make this a little wonkier as I go if I want. Okay, now I need a piece of scrap fabric. Let me go find that. Let's use a nice piece of batik. Now I'm going to decide which side I think is the right side. I want the wrong side up and I want the glue side down. Now, again, let me just trim this to make this a little bit easier. So I'm going to my ironing board and I'm going to want to press the glue side to the wrong side of the fabric. But I don't want to press on the paper, so I'm just going to hold this. I'm going to the ironing board. I'm going to lay it this way and I'm going to press. Now, Wonder Under suggests that you use a dry iron, hot, and um, I always have my steam on. I'm a steam freak. So this is pressed, and you can press from this side too, if you want. Now, before you peel the paper off, you need to trim. Oops. Because if you peel the paper off first, you, you won't really see your design. So let's trim this. And after you press, let it cool. It's very hot, and if you start to peel it before it cools, the uh, glue can lift. 
the webbing, it only takes, I mean, a matter of seconds for it to cool off, so just take that time and let it cool. Now, if you can find a place where you can get the paper to lift up, go ahead and do that, or you can just pull a little bit and it starts the paper from, you know, a little tear in the paper, but there we go. And then just peel the paper off. I just love this stuff so much. Now this is ready to be stuck on to my little square, wherever I want it. Now, see when I pulled, it made some little threads there. So let me just trim that right there. Now I am going to go back to my iron and a lot of people use a damp pressing cloth. I just use the steam of my iron and it works great. So you just put it wherever you want and press. And this is what we have. Now some people just stop at this but some have said after many washes it will start to lift so I am going to go ahead and stitch but here's the deal my zigzag isn't working I can do a narrow zigzag but with a star it gets messy unless you're perfect with the points so I'm just going to do a straight stitch and uh, I have choices with this shape. I could do a straight stitch that goes all the way across, like, you know, like as though we just drew the star. But I'm just going to follow the outside edges. And I have an aqua thread. And I'm just going to go with that. And uh, so let me go do that. This is what I have. I'm trying to show it to you. I really like it. I kind of like it better with the straight stitch. Now, you know, it's possible it could fray, but it's not going anywhere. And I tried to stitch as close to the edge as possible. So I really don't think there's any fraying involved with that glue on there. Now, if you want to go one step further, especially with a shape like a star, I'm going to go with my machine and I'm going to do an outline around it. You know, I'm just going to use the, the points as my guide. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is what it looks like. I like it because it's almost like quilted lines, but it's not quilted. Because I don't really care for things that are quilted, <laughs> but I love lines. Now you'll see, I had to go off the edge up here to make the, the line, you know, end up in the right place. This is where I started, and um, now I'm going to go ahead and purposely do that again. One line is called an outline. If you keep going with more lines, then it's echo quilting. You're echoing the lines. So I'm just going to go, and I will start like right here. Just, you know, come in here, and then go off. And then come in here, and then go off. And I'm just going to do that all the way around, and we'll see what that looks like. You guys, I love this so much. So I did the um, additional line and then I trimmed it to four and a half inches. This might end up being in the quilt, quilt top that I'm about to make. I did want to mention I use a short stitch when doing this because then I have more control as to where the needle, you know, is going to stop. So I can go right up to the point and, you know, in the inner points, corners, I don't know. Um, and then also, it you know, it just makes a nice line around. Now, uh, just think if you have decorative stitching, the things that you can do. But I really like just the straight line. I think it's awesome. And what was the other thing that I was going to say? I don't remember at all other than you need to subscribe so you don't miss the quilt that I'm about to show you guys. I'm waiting. I have to wait for my muslin to come. I have some scraps right now, so I wanted to play with this to get an idea. I think it might be my floating stars quilt is what the plan is, if I do indeed go ahead with it. I have some ideas now that I did this 
echoing around the star, but I don't know yet how, I, how I'd be able to do it. This is why I just love to sit and play with things. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this. So when my muslin comes in, I'm going to get started and uh, show you guys the next quilt top. Cool beans. That is it for this video. It might actually end up being a quick one after the editing. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!